Imagine you have a big data set, maybe answers from a questionnaire, and you want to find out whether there is a hidden structure in your data. This is where fact analysis comes into play, more precisely exploratory fact analysis, short EFA. So what is exploratory fact analysis all about? Exploratory fact analysis is all about finding hidden groups in data. But what does that mean? Let's look at an example. Imagine you have created a survey with eight statements. So your eight statements could look like this. We have eight statements or items and each of them can be rated from agree to disagree or alternatively from one to five. Of course, the statements can cover different topics. Some statements could be about worry, some about energy, some about sleep. In this example, we know the three groups. But in real data, we usually don't know the groups in advance. We just see lots of statements and the ratings. And that's where exploratory fact analysis comes in. Exploratory fact analysis is all about finding hidden groups in these answers. In real life, answers often move together. People who tick, I worry a lot, also tick, I feel tense. Or people who say, I'm tired most days, often say, I lack energy. So it seems that people rate some statements more similarly than others. Those move together patterns hint that there is hidden structure underneath the ratings. Now an exploratory fact analysis scans all the ratings and finds groups that behave alike. So if you ever wished your long survey could magically sort itself into a few clear ideas, then exploratory fact analysis is the solution to this. But how does exploratory fact analysis work? Let's say we have a dataset with many variables. Now it's possible that some of them are related, that is, they correlate with each other. These correlations are the basis of fact analysis. The task of fact analysis now is to group the variables that are most related or correlated. Each group is then a factor. But what does factor actually mean? In fact analysis, a factor can be seen as a hidden variable that influences several observed variables. So the factor itself cannot be measured directly, but it influences variables which can be measured. Put another way, we may have many observed variables but these visible variables are simply signs of a smaller number of underlying factors. So fact analysis combines the variables that are highly correlated with each other. It is assumed that this correlation is due to an unmeasurable hidden variable, the factor. So within each group, the correlations between the variables should be as high as possible. Let's look at an example. Imagine you want to group different personality traits like outgoing, sociable, hardworking, dutiful, warm-hearted and helpful into a few personality types. To do this, you've created a small survey and sent it out to many people. Let's say these are the responses from 20 people. This first person rated outgoing as 4 and sociable as 5 and so on. Here are the responses from the second person, the third person and so on and so forth. And now let's just calculate an exploratory fact analysis with this data. To do this, we'll just visit numico.com. Here is our example dataset. If you like, you can load it using the link in the video description. Of course, you can also just copy your own data into this table. We want to calculate an exploratory fact analysis, so we simply click here. Now we select all variables and we get the results of the fact analysis. So the first important piece of information we need is the correlation between the different variables. But what does the matrix tell us? The correlation matrix is just a big grid that tells you which questions 
tend to move together. For example, between outgoing and sociable, there is a high positive correlation. So it seems that people who rated themselves higher on outgoing also tended to rate themselves higher on sociable. But there's almost no correlation between outgoing and dutiful. This suggests that people's responses on these two items don't tend to move together. So high correlation means people answer those items similarly. And near zero correlation means answers don't really move together. Exploratory fact analysis now uses this correlation matrix as its input. The first result we get from the fact analysis is the explained total variance table. But what does this table tell us? In our example, we have six questions or six variables. Now it could be that the data can be explained by just one underlying factor or by two or three and so on. In the extreme case, if there were almost no correlations between the variables, it could even take six factors. That would basically mean there is no common underlying structure and each variable behaves like its own separate factor. So in the explained total variance table, we can see all six factors and we can see how much variance each factor explains. The factors are ordered from top to bottom, so the first factor explains the most and the least factor explains the least. For example, factor 1 explains about 31% of the variance, the second factor explains about 25%, so if we use just two factors, we can already explain about 56% of the variance. You can see this in the accumulated percentage column. So in this column, you can see how much of the variance you can explain by using how many factors. But what does how much variance each factor explains mean? Your data contains lots of information. And because people answer differently, the data scatters. But many questions move together, they correlate, so there is shared information. And a factor captures one of these shared patterns or information. For example, factor 1 captures 31% of the main patterns in how people answered the six questions. But now an important question comes up. How many factors do we need? Fact analysis doesn't give one single automatic answer. Instead, we usually rely on a few common rules to decide. So we'll look at two popular methods for choosing the number of factors. For both methods, we need the eigenvalues of the factors. But what are eigenvalues? In short, eigenvalues are numbers that tell you how strong each factor is. In other words, it tells us how much of the overall variation in the data one specific factor captures. So a high eigenvalue means the factor captures a lot of information, while a low eigenvalue means it captures less. The easiest way to choose the number of factors is the Kaiser criterion. Here you simply count how many factors have an eigenvalue greater than one. That gives the number of factors. In our case, these three factors are greater than one. So the number of factors would be three. The second method is the scree test, which is a graphical method. First we plot the eigenvalues and the factors, then we look for the elbow or kink in the line. The elbow or kink is that point where the line changes from a steep drop to a mostly flat slope. We keep the factors above that point, so in this case, 3. But in practice, the plot doesn't always look that clear. Let's take a look at the scree plot for our example. Here the result is not so clear, one could argue the elbow is here, or one could argue the elbow is there. Numico uses the number of factors by default using the Kaiser criterion but you can change it here if you like. Okay, 
Now there's one last point. We assume that we have three underlying factors, but we also want to know which variables or questions belong to which factor. This we can see in the rotated factor loadings table. Okay, but what are factor loadings? Let's start with the unrotated table. Here we see the six questions and there we see the three factors. The numbers in the table are the factor loadings. They tell us how strongly each question is linked to each factor. Next, in order to make the pattern easier to read, we rotate the matrix. After rotation, each question usually fits more clearly to one factor, instead of being partly linked to several. In other words, rotation helps the structure stand out. Ideally, each question loads strongly on one factor and only weakly on the others. For example, for factor 1, we can see that the last questions have a large magnitude, while the other four have a low magnitude. The most common way to rotate the matrix is by using the so-called Varimax rotation. Ok, in the next step we interpret and label the factors. For example, since outgoing and sociable load strongly on the same factor, we might label this factor as extraversion. Since hardworking and dutiful load strongly on another factor, we might label that factor conscientiousness. And since warm-hearted and helpful load strongly on the third factor, we might label that factor agreeableness. So these are the three hidden factors that shape people's answers to these six questions. Great, but I have one last question for you. Now we know what exploratory fact analysis is. But what is the difference between exploratory fact analysis and principal component analysis? That's what we'll discuss in the next video. My name is Hannah and I hope to see you soon.